Welcome to Lecture Online, and now we're going to talk a little bit more about the oxidation numbers in reference to the periodic table. Because if we understand how the periodicity of the oxidation numbers occurs on the periodic table, it helps us in figuring out what the most likely scenarios are when atoms and ions begin to combine. So first of all, let's take a look at here. Whenever I have a red number that indicates that is the only oxidation number that that element can have, the only exception I have here is hydrogen, where I put both the most common one, plus one, and the less common one, minus one, because there's only two options there, because there's only one electron available. Either it can give away the electron or it can get another electron back. So if you take a look at the alkali metals, notice that the entire column here, the only oxidation state can be plus one. That is because those elements are very likely to donate one electron, very unlikely to get one electron back, very unlikely to donate two electrons because there's only one valence electron in its valence band. And so the only possibility here is that all of these elements will simply donate one electron, which means that they are what we call reducing agents rather than oxidation agents. Of course, hydrogen, the lone exception. In the... Uh, alkali earth metals, we can see that the only option here is that they give two of their electrons away. So the very likely oxidation state for these elements is plus two. And notice if we go down to the third column here, we can see that the only oxidation state that these can have is plus three. So whenever they bind with other elements, you can see that the oxidation state is plus one, plus two, plus three. And on the fourth column, very likely it will be plus four. Now the purple numbers, what that means is that those are likely states or likely oxy oxidation numbers, but they can have others as well. And they didn't want to list all of them. If you want to, you can go and look it up in your book. But at least it gives you a general perspective here that here on the fourth row here, that the oxidation number simply increases by one as there's more and more valence electrons in its outer valence band. It goes all the way up to plus seven. These are the likely oxidation states, but when we get to iron, it becomes more like plus three or plus two. Cobalt plus three, plus two. Nickel only has a plus two oxidation number. Copper is plus two, plus one. Zinc is plus two, and gallium is plus three as the only oxidation number. Just like boron and aluminum and indium, the only possibilities there is that the oxida oxidation state is plus three. Now when we look to the right here, the only elements that can have a negative oxidation number are the elements over here. So the metals here can only have positive oxidation numbers, so they're only willing to donate electrons. They're not willing to accept additional electrons. So these are all what we would call reducing agents, if you want to think about it that way. And then over here we have the elements that can be both reducing or oxidation uh, um, elements. So in other words, uh, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, and bromine, their most likely state is that they will accept electrons, and so they're most likely oxidizers. So you'll find most of your oxidizers over here, and all of your uh, reducers over here, and then you can see that there's a combination that they can be either oxidizer or reducer, depending upon what they combine with. So typically, for example, nitrogen, when it when it combines with something to the right, like oxygen or fluorine, it's more likely to donate electrons. If it binds with something else to the left of it, it's more likely to accept electrons and therefore become electronegative and have a negative oxidation number. So this is simply there to give you a, a feel of the periodicity of the periodic table and oxidation numbers as it refers to that. So here you can see that there's almost no question that these will be the only oxidation states you will find these elements in. Here we have what we call a mixture of potential oxidation states, but they're all positive. Here you can see that some of these, like silver and cadmium, indium, they all have only one particular oxidation state or one particular oxidation number. And then when we get to the right here, where we have the nonmetals, we can see that they can either be positive or negative depending upon what they mix with. So hopefully that gives you a pretty good inroad to determine what the oxidation numbers are for most of these. In many cases, you'll still have to look it up or you still have to guess at it because some of these elements here have a whole slew of possibilities where they can accept or donate, nope, not accept electrons, but donate electrons in various numbers. Uh, don't get me wrong here. These will not accept electrons. These will only donate elect electrons. All right, so hopefully that will give you a good idea of how to look at oxidation numbers. In the next so many videos, we're going to see all the various types of reactions in which we can come up with the various oxidation numbers. And so those are called oxidation reduction reactions or redox reactions. And we'll take a look at a great number of those and to see how the oxidation numbers are set up on those ions and those elements.